Increasing uh, likelihood is that just being invested in like learning how to program, being able to sort of take advantage of these technologies in sort of fundamental ways, like those are the things that like um, everyone we should be sort of interested in, followed and like invested in. But like ultimately for us, like the way we sort of look at it is like smart people are going to tell us what those things are going to be, and um, for us, we, we try not to make any like. Predictions on like specific quotas on industries, market, and verticals. I would try to be very, very agnostic about those things as a result. Uh, I'm Ray from Nigeria. Yeah, I'm not from Silicon Valley. I'm from Hong Kong. Yeah, but we get funding from Silicon Valley, including YC. Uh, yeah, sorry for all the troubles that I <laughs> broke some chairs and machines here. It's like running your own startup. You keep running, and then you trip over, and then you get up, you keep running again. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what's the next big thing. Yeah, if we knew, uh, we would have built it. Uh, but we know that the trend is uh, any traditional business, they will be and they can be disrupted by the technology. Uh, for example, in Hong Kong, uh, uh, in the past when you want to call a minivan for you to uh, transport some goods from one place to the other place, in the past you have to go through so many middlemen. And then right now you just use an app and then you click some buttons and then you can get a minivan uh, in 
maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. I think this kind of technology that helps uh, to eliminate the middleman and then make things more efficient. I think those are the disruptions that all people are looking for and they will be disrupting all the industries here. Yeah. Probably six years now, but I think that it's, it's very much not complete. Uh, I, I'm the co-founder of a video sharing uh, application for smartphones, and something very interesting that we see is that Southeast Asia is actually, in, 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 in a real sense, ahead of the United States in that regard. Uh, we have uh, lots of users in Indonesia and uh, Thailand, and when we talk to them, we hear that they often relate to their smartphones. It seems that more people have use a smartphone as the, their, their primary uh, device to access the internet than, 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 than uh, people do in the United States. And uh, I think that that's going to become more and more true here and also in the United States. Uh, and that there's lots of opportunities remaining to create smartphone-based uh, products. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I was a co-founder of Exec. Uh, I think everyone here has, has said a lot of great points on where the future of technology is going. Uh, and Ray kind of described what we did at Exec. We were essentially eliminating the middleman um, and providing on-demand personal assistance services in uh, the U.S. Uh, so the type of button you could press uh, what you wanted, and someone would come and do that. Uh, so making things more efficient and removing the overhead, um, I think, is where most of uh, the innovation comes from. I don't know any specific trends, I guess, but basically any industry and making it more efficient, I think, is where you should go. Uh, cool. I think the trend that I've seen recently, one of the big ones, has been around connected devices. So uh, a lot of more boring hardware devices, uh, whether they're uh, yoga mats or kitchen appliances. Um, people are trying to build in um, ways for those to connect to uh, you know, your computer or your smartphone and kind of give you data about how you're using them and let you control them in, in smarter ways. Um, so I, I really see that there's a trend around that, like building kind of smart hardware that helps you um, use it. It makes it a little bit more user friendly. It's probably just one of many big ones. Different from economic 
welcome everybody, uh, especially our friends from the US and uh, other places uh, in the world. We are here today to try to introduce to you the potential of uh, Indonesia in uh, the tech field and in uh, the digital space uh, that is uh, help the developing in Indonesia. So uh, I have a presentation which I hope won't take too long, which is just intended to introduce to you uh, about Indonesia and about the potential of our uh, digital space. So, uh, it shows I'm not very digital savvy here, but I will try. Okay, uh, the presentation is going to be shown uh, on the screen. And basically, let me start. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? I will start with describing what is the creative economy because I, I'm, I'm quite fortunate that I have this title in my ministry, it's Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, and a lot of people <coughs> wonder what is this animal called creative economy. So we like to think of creative economy as the fourth wave uh, of economic development. After we develop agriculture, industry, and information technology, comes creative economy, which is really how do you increase value added from existing knowledge which could be your culture and heritage, and existing technology. It doesn't have to be something totally new, uh, a new invention. It can be uh, existing. And a lot of people think about creative economy as the more culture-based, like the performing arts that you see on the handicrafts or the film and music industry. Uh, but we also should think about creative industries, which are based on science, engineering, innovation, and IT-based, like uh, the person uh, who looks a lot like all of you in this room, the, the one at the bottom, who's in front of the computer. Uh, so these are also creative uh, industries which have a lot of potential uh, for many countries. And the US is probably one of the countries which is leading in almost all uh, creative industries. And you know something about people who work in the creative industries? They're very happy. Yeah, the, look at the picture at the top. These, those are people coming out of the factory. And then you compare it to the three pictures below, which are people who are working in the creative industry. Which one looks happier to you? Okay? <laughs> That's, uh, you know, uh, in creative industries, you are always creating, you're always creating something new, and you're probably very passionate about what you're doing. Next, just a very brief description about the 15 creative industries, which are uh, how we define creative economy in Indonesia, which includes the art space like music, performing arts, uh, culinary, handicrafts, and fashion, and the IT base, which is kind of narrowly, narrowly defined at the moment as IT technology and software and interactive games. Of course, we know that everything else is now linked, as I think one of the uh, speakers just then said, how disruptive technology affects traditional industries. You can take travel as an example. Uh, the traditional travel agents, unless they go online, they are going to die, right? So uh, the interaction between uh, creative industries and technology is obviously something which is also happening. Next, creative economy, creative industries is very important for many countries. For Indonesia, the numbers show that 7% of our economy is contributed by those 15 sectors. It absorbs almost 11% of our workforce, and about 10% of our companies. Next, most of it, if you see these big circles, is fashion, culinary, and handicrafts. But computer services, software, and uh, uh, games, they're, they're above that dotted line, which is the average gro growth of 6% for uh, creative economy in general. So they're small, but they're growing very fast. Uh, and that's really where, next, it is because we have this a, a tremendous opportunity to grow in the tech area and in the digital era. Next, what are the opportunities uh, in Indonesia's digital era? First of all, demography. Next, Indonesia has a very young population. Uh, for our friends who've never been to Indonesia, we are a very large country. We have 240 million people, 70,000 islands stretch across 3,000 kilometers. It takes from Sabang to Marauke, which is the furthest west to east. It takes you probably eight hours, so longer than it takes you to go from New York uh, uh, to London. So it's very large, 70,000 islands. Geographically, it's a big challenge. 
and 50% of our population are below 29 years old. Yeah? So the demography bonus and dividend. Next, we are growing at a very stable rate. On average, Indonesia has been growing at about 6% for the last decade, and with a very little deviation compared to all other countries, including other emerging East Asian countries. Next, we have a growing middle class. Right now, it's estimated at 74 million, uh, so about 30% of our population. By 2020, it's going to grow to 141 million. So that implies uh, affluence, middle class, lifestyle, uh, and uh, growing needs for, for many, many things. Next, what does the Indonesian digital space look like? We are, uh, penetration rate is about 25%, but it is the fastest growing uh, yearly rate in terms of the increase of, uh, of internet uh, in the last five years at 58%. We are still lower in terms of internet penetration rate compared to China, uh, as well as a number of the other Asian countries, but it's growing very fast. And uh, it is about uh, 75 million who are using the internet now. How about e-commerce? They're still very small, but I think it's going to explode just because it's very small. And it's very similar to the early days of e-commerce boom in the US, where people are still unsure about the security and safety of uh, online payments. So it's still really uh, trans you know, wait, wait till your goods come and then you send a, a transfer to the back. Online payment is still uh, very new here, or maybe uh, not yet uh, in operation, just because of concerns about security. And it is more similar to the early days of e-commerce in China, where you place a lot of emphasis on social recommendations. So if you want to buy something, or you want to try something, or you want to travel somewhere, First thing you ask is your friend, and it could be your real friend, or it could be your Facebook friend, or it could be because you are watching some uh, conversation on Twitter. So this is really, we can expect Indonesia to develop its own unique hybrid version of the two huge e-commerce markets in the next few years. I think this is really going to be the big thing for Indonesia uh, in, in the years ahead. This is a uh, number of mobile phone users, 297 million uh, mobile phone users in Indonesia right now, so over 100% penetration rate. Jakarta, I think, is 200% uh, percent, uh, penetration rate. Those of you who are from Jakarta, uh, raise your hand if you only have one handful. See? Nobody. Very few. Very few. <laughs> so, I think most of us have a Blackberry and an Android. Or sometimes Blackberry, iPhone, and Android, right? Blackberry, perhaps, would have gone bankrupt if not for Indonesians who use uh, Blackberry messages. <laughs> Next, this is the numbers again, 297 million uh, mobile phone users, 75 million internet users, number four social uh, ranking in social media network. Facebook, Twitter, Half, uh, everything is, is uh, being used in Indonesia. Here are some more uh, numbers. Next, 30 million spend about two dollars a day, two dollars to fifty dollars a day on uh, lifestyle consumer products. 1.5 million per month manga comic readers in Indonesia. 60 billion rupiah spent on for online voucher games. 34.8 billion uh, U.S. dollars spent for ICT. Indonesians are very gadget conscious. I think they change their headphones maybe every six months. <laughs> Uh, and, and so on, very gadget conscious. 40 to 45, uh, 6.5 million online gamers and 10 billion uh, rupiah point blank games in Tamil. This is just to show you the, the, the size. Media opportunity in Indonesia, all media are, unless they, they go online and uh, use internet, uh, they, they will not survive. Uh, print media, as in all countries in the world, are experiencing uh, that they have to go digital, they have to go tech, whether it's for the media use, for consumer spending in e-commerce, as well as in advertising. Social media marketing uh, in advertising is really a big thing in Indonesia, including for political uh, campaign. Uh, many, many good stories about the underdog winning because of social media uh, campaign, including the, the Jakarta governor uh, who won against all odds because of social media and volunteerism through the social media. Next, uh, I kind of like this table. It's a little bit difficult for you to read. 
it shows you a different, you can access this presentation uh, later on the website or next month. Uh, it shows you uh, startup opportunities by country in uh, Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, in different sectors, and it shows you whether they're saturated, mature, semi-mature, or infancy. So it's kind of, these are the opportunities for startup. And I think what's interesting is that for some sectors, it's dominated by foreign companies. In other sectors, it's dominated by local companies. In some others, it's a mix. So for search engine, it's Google. But for something like, uh, which is very local, like media, it's the thing. Because it's, you know, media tends to be uh, very local. Uh, so that, this is, I think, a very interesting um, table that was uh, uh, prepared by, by uh, our friends uh, in, in the IT community here in Indonesia. Uh, next, so you can even access that table later because it has a lot of detail. But the summary of the findings of this table is that 70% of categories, in, in, uh, maybe just to list to you the categories, they were like communications, blogging, jobs, music, gaming, retail, real estate, ticketing, uh, business, finance, education, transportation. That was the listing of the sectors. 70% uh, of categories have global players. Sorry, let me go back to, yes. 70% of categories have global players. Another 70% 70, 70 contain local firms. So, you know, uh, it's a mix of global players and uh, local players, and 40% have regional companies. So the question is, is there any opportunity for aggregation or regional focus space? Only news, gaming, retail, rental, travel, and transportation have all types, local, regional, and global. So is this showing you that this is the hottest opportunities in Southeast Asia? Uh, whereas for communications, blogging, uh, events, business networking, only global or international players. Are these really where the frontiers of global technology that we were talking about earlier uh, uh, is at? So that's why the local companies haven't actually come uh, into the picture. Uh, and is this where uh, we need to cooperate uh, between local companies and international companies? Whereas for community, local discovery, ticketing, and auto, we only have local players. So is there an opportunity for the local players to aggregate up into regional level uh, platforms? Show you the opportunity and potential for Indonesia. Next, um, uh, this is next. Examples of um, deals and exits of some of Indonesia's startup scenes. Again, I'm sorry, the table is very small uh, for you to see, but we have a variety of startups which are at the initial stage of C capital and then round one. I, I learned a lot coming from Silicon Valley just recently how there's you know, C and then you have, is it series A, B, C? Is that the last one? C, and before you get the venture capital. So it, for most of us, uh, there's one which is already in round three which is uh, uh, Apps Foundry School. Yeah? So some of them are going through this process of seed capital and then getting series A, B, C. Others have been acquired uh, by local company uh, or international company, like uh, Corporal, which was acquired uh, by Yahoo. Yeah? So we have a mix already of uh, either being acquired by uh, larger companies or getting seed capital and growing. But the, where the seed capital and uh, series A, B, C, A, series A, B, C are coming from, some of it is local, some of it is foreign, uh, and, but it's still very small compared to what you see in Silicon Valley. Uh, next, so these are just examples uh, which you can also access uh, on this on the internet. Um, let me pick, let me pick a travel one which I know a little bit about. Ticket.com. Uh, online ticket and hotel bookings. Uh, it's had, it already has seed capital, it's doing quite well. By, and the seed capital is coming from local individuals. But actually, uh, it's, it's basically uh, like related to the, to the founders kind of seed capital. So, uh, you know, we don't have uh, yet a, 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 an angel investor or community which is very active yet. Next. Uh, these are some of the global condition. Uh, this is video, video games and uh, online uh, market, online games. 
uh, game is the future industry. This is showing some of the numbers for the for the games industry and and video games and online games because games is one of the sectors which is growing uh, in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, a lot of the market, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 70% of the market is foreign games and 30% is local games. And so the local uh, game uh, makers are trying hard to come up with uh, Indonesian uh, online games. And some of them have been successful enough to go global as well. Next, this is again games. Uh, total potential of the market um, of 60, yeah, 60 percent international and 30 percent local. And game developers basically started in Indonesia around 2006. But we have a number of game developers here today. Hopefully, you can network uh, with them. Next, software is more developed just because it's been around longer. Uh, 30 percent local, uh, 70 percent uh, foreign. Animation, big market but still, again, still dominated by uh, for, uh, foreign animation. 90% uh, international and 11% global. Next, okay, let me close with some, what are the challenges that we see ahead and how do we hope uh, we can use this forum uh, and future forum and future uh, co cooperation to address uh, these challenges. Next, it is going from network-centric to clients server centric so you're shifting your you have to shift your technology uh, model your business model and your revenue source it's shifting from telephone to internet and now from internet to mobile telephony again uh, and from revenue from network to revenue from client and so on so these are uh, the disruptive technologies that traditional industries and traditional businesses have to really uh, catch up to and this is actually the opportunity uh, for apps next Local developers, local content with uniqueness to compete. And these are some of the areas that, next, <coughs> next. Okay, these are some of, obviously, areas where uh, we see apps uh, being uh, produced for all these uh, purposes. Uh, on tourism, most definitely it has uh, grown in leaps and bounds in the use of IT and digital technology. I mean, probably 90% of people now do research of where, where they want to go, what they want to do online. But I was told the number is around 50% who actually uh, book online to, to do their, their travel. So there's still this huge uh, business potential. But travel agencies that didn't go online, they basically went out of business. So. All the travel agencies, if they want to survive, they have to go online. Uh, even the airlines, low-cost airlines, started before the big airlines like Garuda to be able to book online. Uh, but now Garuda is also having to catch up with going online. So somebody said it on the stage that just that you cut the middleman, you cut, you reduce the middleman, and you make everything more efficient. Uh, and at the end, uh, the consumer uh, benefits, and so you can. I have seen apps where you can compare uh, prices and then uh, uh, pick the lowest price and so on. Next. Okay, just very briefly, uh, our ministry. Next. We have two director generals, one on creative industries based on arts and culture, and the other one on uh, media design and technology, where the IT based industries are located. To address five challenges, not just us alone, but with other government ministries and with all stakeholders. That is access to resources and technology, how to develop your industry, how to access finance and market, and how to develop institutions that will uh, create the ecosystem for you, uh, creating further startups uh, to really grow. Next, uh, next. these are just some of our programs. We try to create meeting places and we support events like NextCon because this is really a meeting place can be physical, a house where everybody meets, or it can be like events like this, where uh, you, you get all the stakeholders and the different people to be able to meet. Uh, and we have programs to try to develop creative partners. And uh, we have a portal called IndonesiaCreative.net, which is showcasing as well as uh, consultation. And eventually, hopefully, it can be also for transactions. Next. And this is where I'll end because I, this is one of our hopes for our future program. 
uh, we have found that, of course, Silicon Valley worked because of this incredible ecosystem uh, of uh, universities, industry, communities of uh, uh, startups and creative partners, financiers, venture capital, uh, and they're all located in a geographically uh, geographical hub, which are uh, quite near to each other. I think it's uh, maybe only 15 minutes, 20 minutes for you to get around. Uh, of course, we cannot replicate Silicon Valley in, in Indonesia. We, we did have this long discussion about this uh, because of the geographical challenges of, of Indonesia. Uh, but you say if you did it in Jakarta, you could have some components of it, but it's very difficult to have all the components uh, of um, Silicon Valley. But we could try to understand what would be the uh, components that are there for an ecosystem from a startup to be able to grow uh, to be mature entrepreneurs. Uh, next, this is the ideal. This is the ideal ecosystem that you want uh, to have uh, for, for with uh, with the um, industry, multinational companies, the, the capital, uh, the venture capital, the telcos, the retail, the media, the university, the users, the developers, and the government uh, being able to have creative hubs that are uh, interconnected. Next. Uh, what is the situation for incubators right now in Indonesia? Here are a few examples. Uh, uh, I'll give you three examples. Uh, one uh, that our ministry started in Bandung, and then there's two in Jakarta. Next. Kajora is, I think, one of the speakers today will be uh, from Kajora, from Mountain Ventures. And it's a, it's a collaboration between Mountain Ventures and Indosat. Is that right? Something like yeah. I mean, I may get that wrong, but it's uh, it's called Idea Box. Idea Box is the incubator. Uh, this is just starting. It's just about a few months old, uh, but already has one success, one startup which has already got financing. Next, so still very small. Pusat Creative is our digital creative center in Bandung. Very small, but we do all the things you know, mentoring, incubation, uh, as well as <coughs> workshops. Uh, and meeting place, but uh, no, no. Uh, at the moment, only seven uh, startups there. Uh, no, no, fi no financing yet. Although some uh, are, are getting some interest from some investors. GEPI is an initiative that actually started with the U.S. state government. It stands for Global Entrepreneurship Program of Indonesia. Uh, it's a similar setup. You have meeting place. You can have a working space, uh, and there are discussions and uh, startups. One of, they also started a angel investment fund. Only an uh, angel, angel investment fund for women. I can't remember the exact name, but it's only uh, going to fund women, a uh, startup by women. And it was started by 10 women uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah, so this is just to give you just the beginnings of incubation in Indonesia. Um, and here are some of the this next the Business Connect program that we've had, like camps, as well as competitions and pitching uh, programs, uh, and business matchmaking. We, we are doing all this, but in a very small scale, and not in a very uh, concerted way, if you like. And this is where our challenge is, and this is where we would like your inputs. Um, how do we, next, how do we grow uh, business incubation in Indonesia, but not in isolation of what's happening in the rest of the world, especially in Silicon Valley. It's, it's about the mentors, it's about access to funding, partnership with easy angel investor, corporate tech partners, how do we access the market, uh, what should be the curriculum for business incubation, uh, how, do we, how do we do this? Yeah. It, we, we kind of know what should be there, but how do we how do, we do this? Uh, next, we have, on our recent visit to the US, we explored cooperation with three business incubators, Plug and Play. Uh, Plug and Play, as you know, uh, is one of the maybe oldest or biggest, I'm not sure why combinators can also talk about this later. Uh, but basically, uh, countries have set their startups over there for three months uh, to, have to, to join the program where they're being mentored and being prepared to do the pitch. And then they have meet, they, they meet the seed capital and the angel investors and the venture capital and so on. Uh, and when I went there, in all three actually, we saw areas which are country based. So you would have a, a Czech pavilion, you would have an Australian pavilion, you would have a Singapore pavilion. 
So this is just an idea that we are uh, exploring with both plug and play and um, Nest as GSP. We already signed an MOU with Nest uh, SGD, a very similar uh, setup. They are linked with Stanford University uh, and 500 startups. They keep 500 startups. Uh, they popular with these on the plane. They did come to Indonesia last year for an exploratory visit. Uh, and I believe they are planning also to come again this year. But again, uh, we need to be able to provide them with startups which are, uh, if you like, uh, being prepared uh, to be, uh, to be uh, invested in. Uh, and this is our challenge. Next. Okay. I will end there uh, by, uh, I have, another, maybe just very quickly, these are just some profiles of our next. Next, these are just again. You can access this in the in the um, in the website. These are examples of uh, some of our digital uh, and IT partners who have succeeded uh, in the domestic market. Some of them have also uh, been able to enter the uh, international market in games, apps, uh, animation, and so on. Uh, so this is my. I told uh, uh, my friends uh, from the IT uh, community, I said, I need to have uh, show and tell. I need to show that Indonesia already has a successful company. So this is really just my, uh, my bag of uh, marketing tools to show you that Indonesia has the potential. Indonesia has already started. But we have a huge uh, potential to grow. And it's going to grow exponentially. But we do need to create the ecosystem. And events such as this, and in future, we hope there will be more events like this, and more permanent uh, platforms, whether it's incubation, and, and how we cooperate between Indonesia and uh, Silicon Valley or similar, uh, similar centers of uh, excellence for incubation would be our challenge. And uh, just to close on that uh, learning process about incubation, I went to Silicon Valley two years ago, uh, on a kind of a similar visit, but at that time we were not so focused about starting how to start an uh, incubation in Indonesia. But I did visit Plug and Play and a few others. And then compared to the visit now, what I found was that it has become much more internationalized. I think one of you uh, mentioned that it's not just about uh, these incubators being a bridge to Silicon Valley, but now it's a bridge to the, to the world. You know, you are bringing, they are bringing, they are bringing international startups to Silicon Valley, uh, not just uh, making the bridge for U.S. Uh, domestic-based companies. And that's actually what you know. I I I, I was uh, visiting five hundred startups that they were having one of their three-month um, workshops, and the participants, fifty percent of the participants were international. Only fifty percent were from the U.S. and they were from everywhere in the world, from Russia from Armenia, from Czech Republic. So this is where I think Indonesia needs to learn how do we enter and have that connection uh, because I think that's the way uh, we need to go. Okay, I'll end on that note and uh, wish you every success uh, for this next con. And uh, I'm not sure why you call it next con, but it means that if there's next con 2014, there must be next next cons uh, in future, right? And we hope that such events uh, can be continued as meeting place and platform. Thank you very much.